there, it's Ben Housel here, and here in this tutorial we're going to have a look at the simple infographics plugin that's available from FX Factory. Now in this plugin you have about 50 different graphs, charts, pie charts, different visualization tools that you can use in your videos. They're really nice and editable, nice and customizable. You can add your own icons, you can change the background color. All these tools are kind of built into the simple infographics plugin, which makes it really easy to plug and play once you get it into Final Cut Pro 10. You can kind of modify things like the color, the font, the number of charts that you have up on screen. So let's jump into Final Cut Pro 10 and take a look. So we're gonna come to a new timeline. We've just got these short uh, videos on the timeline. We're gonna use these as our backdrop for our tutorial here. And we're gonna jump into our titles and generators up at the top left here. Now you'll find the simple infographics plugin underneath premium VFX and simple infographics. And the nice thing about all the FX factory plugins is that you can try them out for free. So if you wanna check this out before you buy it or to see if it's kind of appropriate for your project, you can try it, it'll leave a watermark in it until you kind of purchase the full plugin, but that means you can prototype this on any project that you wanna use before you actually bust out the credit card and pay for it. So we're gonna jump in and have a look at a couple of the graphs and charts here. So you can see as I hover over these different charts, we've got some nice chart animations up at the top. And basically we're gonna grab this infographic three from up at the top, we'll drag it down to our timeline here. Now what you'll notice when you put any graph or chart over the top of a video is that it can be sometimes hard to read. So basically you need to have something that drops the background back. Now we can do that in Final Cut Pro 10, but Simple Infographics has a background effects built in, which means we can drop this down to our timeline. We'll drop it below our infographic and I'm just gonna stretch out a little bit around that. So that means that now if we select the infographic, we'll just move it to the left a little bit here using the on-screen controller. You can see that backdrop makes it nice and visible, really easy to kind of read all the detail in the graph. So if we come across to the right-hand side here, you can see we've got a whole bunch of different options to change. We can change the text in our graph and we can change kind of any one of these options in here. They're either changed by modifying the text or for some things, if we scroll down, you can see we've got things like color and stuff here. For our values, you can see we've got these sliders for the value, so we can modify these or type in a value here. So we can type in, say, 27 and 52, and that will modify these values here, or we can use the sliders to kind of eyeball it. So we'll just drop these down. So this makes it all really easy to modify, and you can see in the chart itself, we can modify the B color here, so we can drop this down and we can change this really nice and easily. Let's find a nice blue to use. Um, if you want to copy this color to another part of our graph here, there's a way of doing this in Final Cut Pro 10. So basically I'm going to click on the blue box now and in here we can drag this blue across and make it a color swatch. And that means now when I click up here, I can select that blue and I can match those colors um, through my graph. And you can see it's changing the, the bars and also changing the key here at the bottom as well. I would recommend not hovering over the text here. You might accidentally kind of move something out of position. Um, look for the options built into the plugin when you're actually modifying uh, some of these options down here as well. So we've got the, the legend or key down at the bottom here. We've got uh, our kind of chart text too. So these are the chart texts along the bottom uh, and we can just type these in and that means that everything kind of stays in the right position. And then we've got our text for the Y axes, the kind of vertical axes across here on the left as well. And we can modify that really easily. So super easy to modify. Uh, the on-screen controllers allow you to position it, allow you to change the size of it. So you can make it bigger or smaller really easily. And if we scroll back up, we'll just have a quick peek at these options. Um, we have options for the, the kind of line spacing and the tracking and all this kind of stuff. The position of the, the text, so the title text, we can modify the position of that. If we look in each option here for the text, then you can see we've got those same options for the text as well and for the rectangle behind the text box as well. So we can actually increase the size of this box as well to make it match our size, our style, and also the position of it as well. So you have to kind of move some of these things independently, but we can get everything modified and positioned nicely and exactly as we want it to be. We have a couple options up at the top here to build in and build out. So basically that allows us to either have this animation at the beginning, or if we uncheck build in, 
then we can play it and it will just be on screen from the get-go. So no animation at the beginning there if we have build in checked off and we can do the same for build out as well sometimes that's useful um, if you want to for instance have everything run right to the end of a video down here on the timeline then turning off the build out for the background effects as well so we can just have fade in only and now everything plays through it will hold on screen and then cut to the next clip so sometimes you do want those animations in there, sometimes you don't. The key thing here is that you've got that nice level of control over the animations and how they're kind of playing back in Final Cut Pro 10. We'll leave them on for the moment. So that's our first example of this graph. Obviously, we can modify everything here. Uh, the values on the left here, if we scroll down, you can see we've got options for the grid being on and off. We can change the, the kind of vertical values that we have here for each of our bars. If we scroll down again, you can see we've got the chart text on the, the left. And then we've also got the, the kind of Y distance for the type here and the size of that text. So if we increase the size of the text, we need to reduce the Y distance so we can kind of modify this nicely to match up with those lines. And then we have some other options down at the bottom for things like 3D extrude. If we turn this on, we're going to get a 3D graph. Maybe we don't want that. Um, and then we have things like glow and the, the long shadow, which is quite popular if you want to put a kind of backdrop uh, behind something. So we could, you know, put a white backdrop behind here that would kind of work nicely with the background and just give it a little bit of this edgy feel. So we'll move on now and have a look at the second set of options here. And this one's quite interesting. So we're going to have a look at some of the graphic animations here. So we're going to jump down to infographic 40 up here in our simple infographics. We'll drop this down to the timeline and stretch it out. And basically with this particular animation, it plays through and we get these little icons that pop up on screen. So we're going to look at how to modify the icons and also the type, and then have a look at a couple of different options with the background effects. So we'll drop this on first. And you can see when this plays back, all in the wrong spot, but we're going to modify that. So I'm going to actually move this down to the bottom right here. And with the background effects, what we can do is we can change the background position so it's flipped so basically we're having it from the right hand side rather than from the left and you can see the background position we can push it so basically it's kind of doing a bit of a mirroring thing here but it seems to work pretty well so now my video is going to push out of the way and keep playing all the way through to the end and then as it fades out it works quite nicely now one other thing we can do with the background effect is we have the blur amount here so you can see I can blur this more or if I blur it less it becomes a very hard line so that's quite nice for producing a different style of backdrop so depending on your video and your design this is going to work well so we'll drop this down and we'll pick out a nice kind of green here and I'm going to change the angle of this so the sheer amount so that it's coming across this way and then if we increase the size of it, we can get it to drop behind those graphics. So you can see we've got a nice level of control just with these few simple sliders and buttons that allow us to get that background in exactly the right spot really easily. So you can see now at the beginning here, I need to taper this a little bit differently. So I just need to move this back so that that animation, there we go. I just wanted to make sure that the initial animation was happening once the green had moved the video across. So you can see now, we play it through, works really nicely, and looks great. So let's have a look at a couple of these icons here. Obviously we can go in and we can change the type. A white text might work a bit better on here. So we're gonna click on our box. We'll change this to white, it's a bit more visible. And then we're gonna come and kind of have a play with these icons. Now there's a couple of different ways of doing this. I've got some icons in my project here. So let's just select all these and we'll drag them down to the timeline. 
Actually, we don't need to drag them down to the timeline, but this just makes it a bit easier for you guys to see what's happening. So with my infographic, if we scroll down, you can see we've got these three different drop zones. So the three different icons. If I click on the first one, I can move my playhead to any one of these icons that I've dropped down to the timeline. We'll select the video one first, and it's gonna pop it in here. And then once I've dropped the icon in here, I need to hit apply clip, and then I can drop down the media size until it fits perfectly in there. And you can see it will match the animation. So now my little icon will pop down. So that's one icon. So basically the process is we're gonna click on our infographics. We'll come to an icon that we want either in the timeline or up in the library. It doesn't really matter which. And then hit apply and then scale it down so that it fits within that space. And then we can also adjust the position of it left and right if it's not quite in the right position. Let's delete these from the timeline. Now the other option we have here, and we're gonna come back to our generators and titles here, is if we come into our bumper opener options here, we're gonna bring down the basic title. Okay, so we've got our animations here. I wanna add a title here that I'm gonna use as my graphic in one of these little icons that's popping up here. So we'll come here, we are gonna delete the default text. And I'm gonna hold down Control, Command, and tap the spacebar. And we are gonna go, let's scroll down a little bit here. We'll grab an icon, let's grab a food or drink icon. So let's grab a cup of coffee. We'll close this and increase the size of it. We don't actually need to increase the size of it. We could get it about the size of the icon that we're gonna be placing. Um, but if we go back now and come to our titles options here, make sure we've got the right one selected. Scroll down, we'll come to this last one. And I'm gonna hover over the coffee and you can see now it's popped in there beautifully. So my media size is just small, so that's why it's small in my box there. We'll apply that and then use the X and Y options to reposition it. So you can see, you can get these nice little infographics. And actually these drop zone options are useful with this plugin or with any plugin. So you can see now with our animation, it's looking good. And obviously we have all the text down here at the bottom. And we can also modify the size of our text, tweak the alignment as well, and then also have the same options for things like shadows and 3D extrude and glow down at the bottom. If we scroll back up here, you can see we can modify the values here. So 60%, we can just slide and increase those. So let's change this down uh, and we can kind of tweak this. So really easy to kind of modify and change the numbers. And we can also change the size of these numbers as well. So if we want them a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger, then that also works really well. We can change the X distance of these as well. So for instance, if you wanted to have those animate on and then have another set up above, we could just taper in the beginning here, so let's taper a bit more. So we've got different options uh, for changing and modifying our animations. And then also if we get the timing right, we can stack them and have multiple versions on there as well. So the color options are all here as well for one, two, and three. And I think this is a super cool little animation. Lots of the animations in the Simple Infographics animations have these icons that you can modify and change. So that makes it a really cool way of customizing your infographics and kind of getting to fit what you want. So let's move on and have a look at the, the next one and a couple other options for the background and stuff like that. So we're gonna to come to Infographic 5 here. We'll drop this down to our timeline and we will add the background in here. Now also with the background, we have this option for 
a fade in fade out as we know background position and then flip and slide we can also change it to full screen as well so that means that rather than having any animation at the beginning it's just going to fade the background out so here i'm going to change this to a uh, color we'll find a nice green and then we can also use some of the different blend modes as well um, if we want to and we just need to find the right color here let's change the opacity to 100 so we're using overlay actually i want to use screen and if we then kind of move this around with screen you can see we can find this nice sort of monotone background for our video here so i think this magenta is quite nice so you can see it's going to fade in nicely and again we've got these real simple sliders here for changing the options of the infographic so we can modify the the value type it in or just use the slider we can change the thickness so we can have a thicker or thinner infographic obviously we can modify things like the general text color um, and the rectangle up here as well so we can pick out different colors for our rectangle and again always able to save this into our swatches and then reuse that in different parts of our graphic so we can kind of modify this nicely we've got those arrows there as well oh and it looks like the arrows above here aren't changing color i found the support for fx factory really good some of these plugins are really complicated i found that if i drop them an email they'll always get something uh, fixed and actually i just emailed them about this to to kind of let them know that these arrows aren't working so hopefully that will be fixed in an update so we'll change this back to the yellow so it kind of matches our arrow colors there and we're going to change our infographic text color to white so that it kind of pops out a little bit better and obviously we can use color correction behind here as well if we want to so if we want to darken our image maybe darken the highlights so that things get a bit more visible we can do that too you can't get all the effects that you want with this background effects plugin that you get with simple infographics but it does a pretty good job at kind of getting you started so you can see now that text now that we just kind of drop the highlights down becomes a bit easier to read so we'll come back to infographics here we can change this and actually we'll just change some of the subtitles here so we'll change this to we can modify the color And we can also modify the, the kind of size of this text as well and the offset. So if things aren't visible on screen, then you can always uh, kind of modify uh, these two. And if you do need to nudge the text as you increase the size of things, then you can do that just by moving these boxes. And actually the, the type will still animate even though you kind of nudge those boxes around in Final Cut Pro 10. This just wasn't quite aligned perfectly. So let's have a look at one last plugin here from Simple Infographics. So we're gonna come down to Infographic 38. We'll drop this onto our last little bit of video here. And we'll drag our background behind here. So for this one, we're gonna have it pop onto the screen. And really there's one thing I wanted to look at in this infographic, and that is when we have these kind of four bars or something like that in here, we have some options in some of these infographics to change the number of values that we have. So obviously we know we can go in and change the color, we can change the title, we can move it around, we can make it bigger and smaller. Uh, let's just change our background here to full screen and we'll add a color in here just so that this is nice and visible. So for this one, if we come to our infographic here, you can see we have the number of sections. So we can change the number of sections in this infographic uh, down. So basically we can add or remove different infographics here. And the way that these animate on, if you see, if we wanted to add an extra one at the end here, we could simply duplicate this, change this to one, and then if we move this across to the right, we're just eyeballing this, but actually we can get the position exactly right in terms of the height. So the Y should be zero on both of these. 
and then we know they're perfectly lined up there and we can delete the text at the top here for this second one and now we should get that animating on and then pretty seamlessly we have that fifth column there now the text below here is a little bit out of line but we know we've got all those controls we need to kind of bump the text into the right spot so we've got that nice level of flexibility within all these infographics that allow us to modify and change them so hopefully this video has been useful if you have any questions then leave them below if you have any requests for new tutorials then also leave those below in the comments i'm getting much better at answering the questions that you leave and i look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial